When I was a kid, like last week, there were TV commercials about the U.S. Marine Corps. The slogan was, the few, the proud, the Marines. They every once in a while still use that, the few, the proud, the Marines. My buddy, Father Patrick Riffle, is now a Marine Corps chaplain at one of their recruiting depots in Paris Island, where they first begin their 13 weeks. I've always liked the military for it in general, what it can do with poor human material and whip it into shape mentally and physically. The Marines generally, generally hold their training or boot camp um, and they hold that it, it's the most physically and mentally difficult among the uniformed services, citing that it's longer than all the other branches with 13 weeks and it requires a more demanding physical fitness test that for a maximum score, this is what you gotta do. Recruits must complete the three mile run in 18 minutes, perform 115 crunches in two minutes, and do 20 pull-ups. That's a bit of a challenge. Although this is an analogy, I have often thought that the spiritual life as a Catholic is much like the military's boot camp. We have a system of obedience, right? Just like the military which allows us unity worldwide, uniting in our own boot camp of sorts in Lent. My old seminary rector used to say, his name is Father Bill Baer, who's gone on to be with the Lord at this point, but he said to us young seminarians, he said, train hard to fight easy. This has proved true. He built our life into men in Christ, men of the church, and men for others as a way of life, as something to reach out to as the ideal. Of course, it's grieved my heart, like no one else's as well, um, in this sexual abuse summit that was taking place in the Vatican the last couple of weeks in the Catholic Church, where this sexual abuse by clergy especially is looked at and what to do as we go forward. But priests are then called by all of this to live integrity along with the laity, and we rely on each other and are examples of faithfulness in fact, my vocation is strengthened to be more faithful and uh, more dedicated when I see dedicated marriages, when I see dedicated people in their own vocations, when they're striving to do well, even with all of the difficulties they, in, <laughs> they require. We must pray in this time for our leaders, the bishops. Pray that they have courage to be truth tellers and honest and transparent assessments of how to move forward. And just as an aside, myself, my own experience, in eight years of seminary formation, I had no such strange homosexual solicitations in seminary. Never. It never occurred. Neither did my brothers recently ordained in the last 15 years. If I had that, I probably would have left. Probably the same day, even. That being so, you and I still have this charge today to be holy, to be saints, to become saints. There's only saints in heaven, and we can become saints by God's grace and our cooperation. It's a good thing, something that we, we can be encouraged by. We'll be called to be saints here and now. It's not something far off. It's now, it's today. And in this particular world... <laughs> where sin is allowed to grow and rarely fought against by many in our culture. This clownish decadence that we see in our celebrities displays before our young people a life of carefree liberty, which is in fact slavery to sin and leading into a life of sin because vanity in, in itself is a sinful vice. But what else is there, of course? A strong display of the human flesh, the human form, right? And today is actually Clean Heart Sunday where we want to show forth also our battle that we continue to fight against pornography. Pornography is one of those things that drowns our love and weakens our ability to pray to God and keep his commandments. And it is a plague. It's an epidemic and more accurately a pandemic. It's around the world now. Accessible uh, to all kinds of people with any kind of device through any Wi-Fi signal you get. And this is something where I think we need to lead a crusade today of manliness and purity about these things to convince the rest of the world that man is not just some beast with his instincts. In fact, he can be saintly 
and be in possession of himself. As he says no to the things that will not make him flourish, he will possess himself more that he can give himself in better ways. Because what pornography does, of course, changes our brain chemistry, changes the way we relate to other people. In fact, people that struggle with this on a chronic level with an addiction, they find human touch actually hard. It's actually something they're uncomfortable with. Now, don't assess people that are like Germanic now. Don't do that because that might be the case too, where they don't like touch, but it's their heritage. But in general, that's one of the effects. Also, it affects the way we think. It enters our thoughts and burns into our memories, these images. And it's not just a man thing. It's, a, of course, a plague among American men, but now women are using it. And this is a problem. This is a big problem. And I'll tell you more about how, how problematic it is if you, if you disagree with me, I'd be happy to, to tell you why it's a bad thing because there are people that say it's a good thing. That is weird. That is very weird and wrong. Um, it will only lead to darkness. Look at all the sexual crimes out there. Usually the beginning was just a simple pornographic habit and it turned violent down the road. Lent affords us a time to push back on that if that's one of our habits, to confess that sin, of course, before we really go up for communion even, my goodness. We need to really purify these hearts, and it's possible by God's grace. So we're entering our own little boot camp this Wednesday. This Wednesday is Ash Wednesday, where we enter this afforded time for us to kind of give a training, a physical fitness test for the soul, so to speak. I used to think of it as a spiritual retreat when I was kind of a little softer. I was like, oh, this is a nice time with you, Jesus. This is great. But as, because we do draw near to the Lord a little closer in Lent, and, but lately, I've been more and more convinced that we need a strong, militaristic kind of will motivated by our call to holiness and the strength of grace provided by God to move forward in an increasingly more fallen world. And instead of just lamenting what's going on, what will we do to purify ourselves? We're supposed to be lanterns in a dark world as Catholics. To become light, we must draw near to the Lord who is the light of the world. He said it. He is that. So our boot camp is not a run, <laughs> thank God, <laughs> of three miles or, or 115 crunches in two minutes. It's not crunches or pull-ups. What we have is something different in our regimen, in our basics, um, in our life. Number one is daily prayer. We've got to do this. And it's hard to do it. It's hard to keep that routine if we haven't had it. So stick to it. And this is where we need that militaristic will to say, I'm going to follow through on it. You don't have to like it. You just have to do it. And over time, you will like it. And in fact, it will be enjoyable. <laughs> it will be actually enjoyable. It does. I mean, it's, I enjoy it. Thank God for a prayer life. And it sometimes doesn't feel like it's going well but it's more that we're keep, we keep on doing it. We keep that habit. That habit, as it builds up, will feed into the rest of our life with new strength, with new realities and, and more charity towards others. We'll actually consider others more where we set our will to follow Jesus and his will for our life. Also, secondly, weekly mass, worshiping God and not ourselves. Sunday's not about ourselves. It's about God and worshiping him. During Lent too. We abstain from meat on Fridays, even when we smell what's coming out of, billowing out of Burger King and McDonald's on Fridays. You're like, man, I can really smell that meat today for some reason. You know, like that is real. And it's that little temptation, those sirens that are calling your name. Hey, you know, just be a sucker and give in. Don't be a sucker. That's my, that's my message. Don't be a sucker. Don't give in to that. Because if you keep those disciplines, you'll, your mind will be freed up to contemplate more heavenly things and things about your fam, fam, family and friends that you normally wouldn't have. To adore the Lord and pray the Stations of the Cross in Wednesdays and Fridays and to adore the Lord in the Blessed Sacrament in Eucharistic adoration. Monthly confession too, number three. So daily prayer, weekly mass, monthly confession. This is good. This is good. Even St. Padre Pio increases it a bit. He said this. I just read this this week. It blew me away. I do not want souls to stay away from confession more than a week. Even a clean, unoccupied room gathers dust. Return after a week and you will see that it needs dusting again. He's speaking about the soul. Boot camp starts this week on Ash Wednesday. 
where we will be marked with ashes by the sign of the cross, as it was also traced on our foreheads by our parents and godparents at our baptism. Let's begin to train hard to fight easy, to keep that strong militaristic will, to use any aggression that builds in us and put it right into the mission of Jesus Christ in our families, in our communities, where we work, and also to make reparation for crimes against humanity in New York and Virginia in late-term abortions that we know is there. That is evil in our world. It must not be allowed to be structured over time. It is also a time to battle our personal sin. With God's grace, we can have that victory. To not be a sucker. Don't give in. Do not either quit. Refuse to waste this opportunity to draw nearer to the Lord and his grace through the sacraments and devotions, which strengthen our resolve to follow him. We will die one day. We will. Are we ready to meet the Lord and say, I followed your will, and your will be done was part of my life constantly, or my own will? He will know what we have chosen in all the truth of it.